Hello, and welcome to another exciting, because all of our episodes are exciting as far as I'm concerned. I'm excited to be here. They're excited to be here. And you are excited to listen, to watch. We'll see. I guess we better deliver. The Man from Osirian, the Infernal Vault edition adventure, where we are auditioning several new players and more on the way in a fun little Pathfinder Society adventure set right in Absalon on the island of Gartos. So, when we last left our heroes, we had two at the door and two on the dock. Or if you count companions, four at the door and two at the dock. Do you remember this? If this is your first time listening, go back, listen and look for The Man from Osirian, the Infernal Vault, the TIV version, and get caught up. Two episodes, we are on episode three. Aerith, running down the dock, realizing that if you run too quickly, you're going to run into the dark and right out of the man's light source, carrying a sword and a lantern that he snatched from the actual wagon. And he's closing on you rapidly. I believe the nefarious, nefarious, famous, something with us on the end of it, Foxglove, is that is your real name? Ended up on her backside on the dock and had hopped up. Did you manage to get up last time? Were you on your feet? Up and running? Yes, I think I had, I, be, I believe I had just gotten up. You had just gotten up. Okay. So. Or uh, no, I was on my back because I had a plan. Right. And I believe I left it that the man was closing rapidly. Dun, 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 coming up on you. And I think I'm even going to go so far. Let's take a swing at you with my brand new mummy's mask, but the closest you can get to a Syrian dice with a scarab means a natural 20. No scarab today, but 17 with my pluses, I believe, hits you. He comes so up. He, he's attacking the, the librarian? He's attacking the librarian. However, okay. however, taking even with a negative four, what, what is your armor class at the moment? Nine. Yeah, with my bonuses, even taking the negative four, because I'm going to try and use my sword to whack you, not run you through. He's trying to stop you, put you back in your bag, and ship you to where they wanted you, and probably kill you later. Killing you have, you know, blood on the dock, questions, blah, blah, blah. So at least they have the advantage the man's not trying to kill you outright. However, you shall take two points of subdual damage, and I believe it goes to the foxglove. What you want to do? Miss Fox, do you prefer Miss Glove? I'm sorry. I don't think she minds what she's called. Okay. I am going to roll under the cart and take advantage of a feat, which is Fox shape. So that allows me to turn into a fox or disguise myself as a fox. Um, you mean like the Kitsune anamorphic animal with the fox head or like a little four-legged? A little four-legged fox. Oh, okay. Um, Interesting. And then take off after them. And is this a natural ability, a feat? You, this is first it level? Is a, it is, yes, it is a feat. Um, it is an alternate to Kitsune magic. Oh, so okay. So this isn't, we're talking, not talking about a racial trait swap. You're talking about an actual first level feat that you took as a character feat. No, it's a, it's a racial trait swap. Oh, it's a racial trait swap. So, oh, okay. So instead of dancing lights, I can turn into a fox at okay. will. I just like exploring the actual options here because Kitsune is well known, but not a lot of people play them. And knowing some of the interesting racial trait swaps and everything is good to know exactly dice mechanically where it is. Okay, so under the cart you go. Turn into a fox. Now I have to dig up more minis. <laughs> That's fun. That is a, um, a disguise roll if you would like me to roll it. Disguise yourself as a fox? I thought you yes, said is. you turn it, into a fox. It, 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 I can read it to you. It says, you take on the form of a, a fox whose appearance is static and cannot be changed each time you assume this form. Your bite damage attack is reduced to 1d3 points on a damage hit, but you gain a plus 10 racial bonus on disguise checks made to appear as a fox. Oh, okay. So it's like a glamour. Yes. So you're not actually like alter self like the second level spell or okay it's not a polymorph thing it's a, just like a glamour it's a disguise an illusion yes. an illusion I see now I gotcha okay cool 
so how many actions are we talking it's just a standard action drop for free move under the cart for a crawl is a move I'm action already my, i'm already on my back yep so i don't have to drop i thought you said you got up i i thought i did and then i remembered that i had had a plan so i didn't get up okay so you crawl under the cart as a move action mm -hmm. a standard action or a move action to activate this ability standard standard action okay so you're pretty much done, but you're under the cart and you're in disguise? Yes. Okay. Got it. Right, Theo. I'm just going to put you on this cart here. <clears throat> well, it looks like on the cart, but just so we know where you are. Back to Arif. All righty then. Let's see. So he is intent on hurting me, and that is super uncool. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm an old man. You don't go around abusing the elderly like this. What's wrong with you? <laughs> so I think I'm going to do a withdraw action. Okay. To escape a threatened area. Now, to, just to emphasize the lighting, I am going to change the lighting on... Um, uh, what do you call it? Um... Well, I'm going to change the lighting as of the now. Map. Okay. Okay. So now you can see. Yep. Now, your guy actually has a light source, which I have to kill because you do not technically have a light source at the moment. But just to emphasize how much, you know, how dangerous it is to, to run outside of the sky. See this? Mm hmm. We've kind of lost. <laughs> we've lost all sight of our fox. That's okay. um, let's see. So this dock thing that we're going on, how high above the water or at waterline is it? Uh, it's got to be high enough for a major ship. So I'm assuming you're looking at at least a good five, six foot drop into the water. Okay. Like the pier. So he, like I said, uh, takes that lateral movement there as a uh, withdraw action and then plop into the water. Okay. Are you still tied up? No, I was cut loose. I know she freed your free feet and you got the gag down, but did you get your hands free? I thought so. That changes my course of action. If my no, hands no, I, be I believe. Sorry, <clears throat> it's been a while. This is what happens when we play two weeks. I know apart. his hands <laughs> were in front of him, but I don't think he ever got them free. Yeah, no, I think you were still tied. That's what made it funny. If they're in front of you, you can still swim. You can kind of do this stretchy doggy paddle, you know, swim with a small penalty. Okay. But yeah, I'll, I'll still try that. I yeah. mean, almost death or certain death. So, yep, yeah, plop, <laughs> in, plop, plop into the water. Because, you know, the guy might beat you unconscious and then take you on a boat and then you're done. You're gone. You're, you know. You then could, I'm in the drink anyway. You could wake up in some backwater place like Osirian. I mean, who wants that? All right. Yeah. And then uh, as I'm under the water, I'll try to swim underneath the dock. So I'll take shelter. Okay, so um, run to the edge, there's a move, and then kind of a swim check, please. Just so that you're, it's not that it's so choppy water at the, at the wharf here. Um, yeah. Luckily, it's a quiet night. But just so you're, you know, don't fall into a rowboat, don't smack yourself against one of the posts or like the piers, and you're kind of constrained yep. with the... Swim check a nine. Okay, blub, blub, blub. <laughs> well, well I, I, I can't be good at everything. Yes. You can hold your breath for three rounds plus your constitution modifier. If we get that far. Now, more swim checks next round can, you know, surface you and you'll be fine. But just so you know, you're currently forced to hold your breath for a moment. And now it's me. And I come over to the edge. And I shoot my semi automatic machine gun for a movie effect into the, you know, get a, we can see those cool underwater bullets. No. Um, hmm. No, he'll, as I'm kind of, yeah, he'll just wait and watch and hope you surface that he can grab you or something. Because as, like, as I'm kind of as I'm kind of bobbing, you know, yeah, up and down. Yeah, oh, I hope you can swim in armor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> splash, glug glug. <laughs> it's probably the comment that cost you the under the water goes. No, I don't think I want to try that. The fox without the glove. You're up. Do I get a perception check to see if I heard him splash in the water? Oh, I'd say that was a freebie. Okay. Um, I mean, so you can I... you you can to be sure if you want to burn a move, sure. Because then you can well then you can pinpoint it. 
Did I hear someone splashing amongst all the other ambient noises of the evening? Or was that the, d the stern susploosh that was over there? Run, go to him. Sploosh. Um, how far away am I from him? Perception? Let's have that perception. Then we'll talk about all kinds of things. Okay, one second. Eighteen. If you count the upsy and downsy of the dock, I'd say for forty feet on an angle. So, mm -hmm. I guess I'm just gonna run after them. Okay. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. So you come running up on the dock beside the guard, and he's looking down, looking at you. You're looking up at him. What does the fox say? She, she's not going to talk. She's not going to break her disguise. Oh, okay. Because there's a whole video that... Just saying. <laughs> she does not make any of those noises that are made in the video. Okay, thank you. So. What do you do? You go running up. Um, it's a double move to get you there. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. No, one move. You're beside the guard. What do you want to do? Mm. Besides, look adorable and <laughs> a fox running on the docks at night in this town is actually not such a rare occurrence. Like it's unusual to see that particular kind of animal, but I don't think he's gonna be like, ah ha, you know. He just looks down as an animal. Hmm. Um, Shoo. <laughs> I'm gonna bite him. Okay. <laughs> huh. Rabbit fox get his attention off the old man yeah really eh you just bite him hork a loogie make it look like you're uh, you're foaming at the mouth and freak him out uh altered 20 to hit ah <laughs> bloody beast bit me what the blazes okay damage it said something about reducing your damage, but still. Three. Max damage from my bite. Man was murdered on the docks by rabid creature. <laughs> Possibly a fox. It was at 11. <laughs> Sorry, how many? Three. Okay. Ow. <laughs> He's worse off now than the old man I was beating. Karma! No, oh, Karma's a bitch. All right. Arif, how about them swim checks? All right. So, what is, what's the water condition here? Is it rough? Well, calm? Uh, like at night, you'd assume it's calm, but because you're because you're on a wharf, like there are you know lapping waves, there is movement. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand that a nine is not necessarily like you're not dropping into a placid pool. Like the things are bobbing, there is a current. You know, there is all that kind okay. of thing. So, I would so like you to be ten. Would yeah. be nice. It would be nice. Um, yeah, so I'm just kind of floundering where I hit. What I'm trying to do is make it to one of the piers, the the pier supports, and just hug the pier support until something happens and he gets shoot on. So here we go again. Seven failed. Still floundering. <laughs> okay. So that's a move. I think I can try twice. Now, even you're on the surface, I'm having waves crest your head. So I'm still oh, holding yeah. you to two rounds now of holding your breath. Uh, I think a swim check's a move action. Yeah, right? you get another one. Go ahead. Okay, so I made 13 the second try. Okay, okay. So you managed to right yourself and turn your head away and, you know, stay above the, you know, move with the swells, as it were. Um, And you can move in a direction while doing that, which is swim checks are half your movement. So you can, like, swim 15 feet. Now, I can either reduce your movement or give you penalties to swim checks. So I'm going to say I'm going to give you a penalty to the movement. So I'll give you 10 feet because your arms are bound. Okay. I just think I need to go five to kind of hug that support right there. Yep, you're good. Just so I don't drown. Yeah, underneath or le okay. le less likely I drowned. All right. So you get over and try to grab the thing. No problem. And, you know, now that you're contemplating, you know, nature is coming to your aid. Maybe you should take a career in Druid instead of just being an expert scholar. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you hear the guy call out, Oh, baby, oh, rabbit creatures on the night. Like, oh, wow. Nature itself is turning against you. Flee! <laughs> flee while you can! <laughs> my turn. I have a sword in my hand. I am upset. You bit me. I'm going to introduce you to the end of my sword blade. 
you okay. nasty little creature with a seven plus, mm, that would be like nine? What's your AC? Nine does not hit me. It's a 16. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, so he's stabbing, poking away, ah, you know, waving the, f the flame in your face. <laughs> I don't attack with it because that would be penalty to both rolls, but I just, you know. Okay, that's me. It's your turn. Mm, what am I going to do? Well, you're winning. I can tell you that. I guess I'm just going to bite him again. All right. Keep the old man out of his purview. You know, I really didn't think it would come down to this mix him up. I honestly thought, like, that's why I didn't bring up the turn track. I honestly thought this would be quick. <laughs> Everybody would run or something. Some poofy smoke magic and you guys would darkwing duck out of there. That is a 15 to hit. A 15 to hit. Ouch. I'm, I'm, I'm just a librarian. I, I can't do poofy magic things. No, I'm, oh, I thought she would, you know. <laughs> you are in the company of the notorious. Well, I mean, I was going to lure him away, but then the old man jumped in the water and completely ruined my plan, so. Oh, welcome to DM's world. There's a lot of shoulda, coulda, woulda. But right now, you're doing great. So... One point of damage. Okay, well, that's four. <laughs> I don't feel and so then, bad. Um, I'm going to actually run off the dock. Okay. Full movement and try and get him to okay. chase after me. I talk about opportunity. Four. Miss. Nope. <laughs> run. Okay, so running away. Now, do you want to run past him, like through a square with an acrobatics check, having your movement, but you can go straight through him? It's probably cost you less just to kind of do the L, the mm. L shift. Like the sort of five this way, 10, 15, 20. What is your movement in your, oh no, it's the same, isn't it? Um, 40. Yeah, so five, 10, 15, 20, it's 30, 35, 40. So you're, you're well off and away there. Whoosh. And now I'm just a lone guard. Standing with a torch, but because Aerith's under me, it looks like I have his nameplate, which is really funny. My hope is that he'll chase after me, but if he doesn't, I'm going to have to come back, so. Okay. You bite me and run into the night. The old man that we're supposed to put on a boat is underneath and unobtainable. <laughs> so the question is, is my temper. Is this guy going to chase down a rabid beast that bit him? kind of forgetting because I'm low level and kind of a bit of adult yeah um, kill the thing and bring it back because you know we do have to cut into your brain for the doctor to tell us and destroy the animal if I have rabies I mean even even that uh, kind of apothecary so let's say intimidate give me an intimidation check if you can intimidate me into 99 boo-booing you know what I mean forcing the hand 13 plus. That would be a 16. 16. I lose it. I lose bloody beast. 5, 10. Counting my squares. <laughs> Next one is 20. Where are you? You're up here. Where'd you go? Yeah, I get this far and then I burn a second move as perception trying to figure out where you are if you're in my torchlight. Aha! There you are. And that's me. But you're ten feet away. Arif! He goes running off into the night. Well, well, well this this worked out perfectly. Yep. Um, you're cold, will... you're wet. Welcome I'm, to hypothermia. I'm cold and wet and I have a dent in my head. <laughs> this is how I start most mornings when I fall out of bed. Oh no. Um, uh, make no progress with that roll. Got a nine. Uh, oh, second attempt. Down I go. Uh, I'll probably fail by five. Let's see. If I fail by five or more, I go underwater. If you're underwater, either because you fail, uh -huh, you just hold your breath. Hold your breath for a number of rounds. You go twice to your con score. Okay, so I'm underwater. Mm -hmm. Flub, flub. But it's a fresh round, like you were breathing. Okay. So you, you restart. You know, th those two other rounds don't count because you've you've managed to hold your head up for a full round. And I've got like an 18 con, so it, it's good. Oh, holy spry for an old guy. Way to go. Used to be a barbarian, now you just read. Okay. Um, 
So you get two checks though, remember? Did you two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the first one I made no progress with a nine. Second one I failed with a five. Uh, okay. And yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm gripping at the uh, the column and my hands are slipping and I just whoop, straight down. Now we'll give you a plus two because you have the column. Oh, okay. So then I'm... Yeah, you're just not getting anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Because even if you can't use your hands, your feet, you know what I mean? Just kind of pushing yourself, trying to push yourself up. I'll give you that. So okay. we're drowning the star of our show outright. Now, this doesn't mean you're immortal, Frank. I will kill you. But I'm not also going to suffer a whole bunch of fan mail going, well, he could have gotten a plus two because he was the thing in the vortex of this. And where's the friendly dolphin? There's always a friendly dolphin. I push him. No. So I am willing to give you the benefit of, of, of the doubt, but I will get you. You're never going to see mummy's I'm, mask. I'm pretty spry for an old guy. You are. I am. I threatened him before. I think he's actually like, oh, do you mind if I revamp my characters? I said, sure. And suddenly he has an 18 constitution. <laughs> no, it's a 10. I was teasing. Where is Gary the dolphin when you need him? That's all I'm saying. So he's he's far away from here. Um, all right. Well, thanks for all the fish, and we're back to our fox. Free action, drop the disguise. Okay. Um, as a move action, I'm going to draw my sword or my uh, scissor, as it's called, as I move up to him and take a slash at him. You have a scissor. I do. That is an interesting weapon. Would you please describe to the listening audience? Yeah, let me pull it up. <laughs> what does that look like? I know what it looks like. At least I believe I know what it looks like. So a scissor is a hardened tomb that fits over the forearm, ending in a semicircular blade. Um, I get a plus one shield bonus to AC unless I attack, and then I don't have a shield bonus. So it almost looks like a prosthetic. Like it's got it's like the big cone you put your arm in. Uh, and, and then, then there's it... a huge semicircular blade at the end of it. Oh, that's nasty. Okay. So. Oh, you vigilante types aren't known for like, you know, carrying teacups around. So I shouldn't be too surprised, I suppose. Fourteen to hit. Very nice. Yes. And the damage is two. Three for a bite. Another one, four, up to six. I'm not doing so good. I mean, I'm, I'm fine. I mean, no mercenary worth of salt has like any less than, you know, the proverbial eight to ten hit points. But I don't think I feel so well. What's he say when the uh, fox mysteriously turns into a girl in front of him? What the what now? Oh, tell everyone! It's you! If I survive this encounter, the whole world will know that foxes aren't really foxes. Nice weapon. I'm going to take that from your cold dead... I don't know. I'm just surprised. He drops the torch and runs into the darkness so you can't see him. <laughs> Tempting. Well, I no, have no light vision, no, so... No. Yeah, that only gets you an extra couple feet, though. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm faster than he is. Now, I did have... I did have... Um, Speaking of what you can and can't see, I had stated that there is light um, on on the dock area, like so people mm -hmm. can see what they're doing, like loading and stuff. So it's not terribly so unlit, you know, further down the dock. That's not helping you guys, but at least it'll help our audience. The video here, if it ever makes it up online, our video situation is a little bit more lit up now really hate how this crammed in the corner to help if i can't have shield bonus granting nameplates on everyone i've tried to have the players match a specific dice character color to the theme of the character and then we put the little disc under them of said matching color to help you identify who's who and what's what anyway so i said ouch and you pull and you move and you're done and now it is my turn? Eric's turn. Eric's turn. Eric's turn. Eric's turn. Sure. Alrighty then. Silly me for not using the turn track. That's fine. So 18 on my swim check this time. Hey, there you go. I feel happy. Stroke. Stroke. And I will move to the, uh, the edge of the dock. And then down just a wee bit to the edge of darkness. 
And then I'll try to make my way out of the water. So that's one swim check. Okay. Actually, Second I, one. I believe this is some sort of prop or ladder right here in the darkness. Oh, okay. You can't see it, but, uh, you know, there's also uh, ropes and cables dangling for lines for, for boat. You know what I mean? There's debris, okay. there's nets. Um, they actually have netting hanging straight along the wharf for several reasons um, to attach things. And, you know, so people can literally just sailors Climb out. fall. Yeah. All right. Then I'll uh, make my way towards that with the 18 swim check. Okay. And uh, have a climb check, please. Pull and then the, cl the climb check was a six. Now, yeah, I was going to say, now the climb check, I am going to restrict the penalty on the climb yep. check because your hands are bound. Um, yep. Now, what I could do is just keep the DC at 10 as opposed to like five for climbing a rope. Like you're on an edge and you know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. So one balances the other. All right. Yeah. And for suspense sake, what's going on? What's going on? Meanwhile, several rounds have been laid. Meanwhile, back at the Declan family home, the townhouse of of danger, of where everything's happening. I believe. Were you going to knock? Like, were you seriously going to knock at the? <laughs> Somebody said, oh, should we knock? I believe last game. And I was like, what? Are you seriously going to knock on the door? That's what we're talking about right now. Oh, okay. So what do you we're actually... trying to decide what two neutral characters would actually do it in this situation. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. What, uh... What you want to do there? Trying to figure out which one of us has a coin so we can flip this. Yeah, that's... What we <laughs> we spent doing. all our starting gold, which means we have no coins, which means we can make no major decisions. Is this what you're telling me? Yeah. Basically, we're neutral. <laughs> okay. We could knock. We could go home as long as there's dinner. Exactly. Like, I'm hungry. Food sounds amazing well, right now. You know, the only thing I think you're doing right now is besides, you know, like, shaming the society that you belong to. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Movement bar. That helps. Mm. Um, I think I'm going to have my Edelon, who I, after reading up on them a little bit, realized that all of my communication with her has been mental um, and not out loud. Yeah, but like as a player, you're saying I instruct her this and you get a response. So, and it's not like everyone took great notice, but we will say... Players and characters now, you know, you're not really allowed to respond to anything that's said between him and D.Va, and it's all good. Right. I think what's going to happen here is we're going to send our minions in first and peek through the window. I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm you're, good We already did the window peeking. Well, that's what I mean. Like, we're going to send... Oh, they go in the first. door, and you get to watch what happens from those. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, we'll let Dina knock, and uh, you know she'll be standing there, and uh, okay. And Roxy will be just you know just out of sight, and we'll be just around the corner peeking in the window, hmm. prepared to help, because it's not that far of a jaunt just around the corner. Okay. Yeah. That's the plan. All right, so we're going to call this, assuming they haven't caught on to you guys and all your harsh whispering, you know, uh, what we call the surprise round. So you guys during the surprise round move to the window for a better view. Please move your characters and minis. And you've instructed Dina followed by Roxy or Roxy followed by Dina. I'm assuming Dina's opening the door. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Dina's going to knock. Roxy doesn't really knock well. No. <laughs> It's, yeah. it's something we've been working on. Yeah, it's a, this is the trick for the next level, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me reveal a little bit more of the sort of front of this building here. There we go. <clears throat> the proverbial door. Now, as I had said before, this corner of a quiet street, so I'm assuming we don't have a lot of police and people walking by going, what are you doing? You know, it's a red brick townhouse melds into the middle class buildings um you guys still see the flickering candle through the window 
and you've come around the front. This is in the East District, which is kind of here on the map that is behind me, because that's sort of a go-to little bit of Absalom map behind me in the video. So, can I have, well, you guys, you guys used your um, thing to get in. Diva, the door is not locked. Okay. Okay. Uh, Would you like to? I'm going to instruct her to open it. Does it open towards the, which direction does it open towards? In. She tells you it okay. opens in. Okay. So I'm going to have her kind of like open it a crack and peek in. Okay. So we're talking Since stealth I... for, stealth for her and then a perception. Yes. So give me a stealth check and a perception check. Alrighty. Or would you like a perception first and then a stealth? Um, Let's just do it as it shows up on here. So I'm guessing where's my stealth? This profession. There you are, all the way down here. Stealth first. Did that show up? Yeah, it's getting there. It takes its time. Sometimes a bit of a, a bit of a reaction. Twenty stealth. Plus one, it should be. Okay. I think. No, that's fine. 20 on the roll. I think, I think that's what it... Yeah, there we are. All right, good. It showed up. Awesome. Uh, All right. And then perception, which is here. Yes. 19. Okay. She stealthily opens the door not so much as a creak but a crack and then she needs she suddenly oh, this is see this is so close you did say a crack so i'm going to give this to you she tells you that there is a piece of twine or rope or string blocking the door that she has just made taunt okay i'm going to inform uh, how do you pronounce your name so that I know how to do that properly? Kada. Kada. Okay. Um, I'm going to whisper to Kada. I think I found a trap. Well, I mean, my Edelon. I think Dina found a trap. Are you good with those, or should we just push through? I'm not exactly the best with traps, and we both know that Roxy is probably not really good at disabling them either. Maybe we should call them back for a second and regroup. Anybody got a torch? We could just burn the place down. Oh, wait. We got to get a document, don't we? It's oh, right. That's right. Okay. Um. I mean, how else are we going to come in? There's, there's With no a one. sign saying, this is my very first mission, that's what I'd go for, but please continue. Yeah. Ah, maybe she can, you know... Disable, disable it? Not really. Yeah, I guess so. She could attempt it. This is what you'd call a low-tech trap. You know, like, there yeah. are a certain amount of traps that have DCs less Would than 20. To, that, yeah. DM? Considering the dis DC disable device is insanely low, and the perception to perceive it also per insanely low, like I said, if you had done the perception first, you would have seen, yeah. you know, telltale signs, and then could have tried to disable it. The little, you literally said, just pop it a crack to kind of look or listen or something. So I was going to be polite. Um, so but Would you allow an untrained check on disabled device? Oh, I see. Well, if it's normally a trained skill, no. I'm t I was yeah. talking like, since you're not a rogue, if you had a rank in it. No. Because I, I don't believe that's an untrained skill. Nope. Okay. Yeah, I'm no good either. Okay. All right. Um... However, you have been warned, and she's not totally certain she set it off so what would you do now is it like ankle level or is uh, this it's like the, it's at the top. top it's at the top it's at the top okay um can i have an intelligence check 
But yeah, your I, Pathfinder Society, you know, I'm, you're pretty sure that you didn't sleep through the Trap 101 right. class. The rogue they brought in was very, you know, very endearing to watch and look at and knew their stuff and, you know. Well, I slept through it. What'd you get? A nine. That's a better excuse to say you don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I slept through that class. The droning, I, yeah. Been, I'll have a rogue wah, with me wah, at all wah, times. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. Yeah. I slept through that class, sorry. So I'm just going to say, what the hell, let's just... We weren't able to find another way in, so this is our only way in. So we're just going to have to go with it. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Well, she's not going to get hurt if she pushes the door open. We right? don't. I don't think we know what the trap is actually connected to. I think we just know it's there. I was referring more to your positioning players. You may want to reposition yourselves for the impending. There's not much you can do about the trap, but there is something you can do about, you know, your next action after it goes off. Um, right. So can I how about if I sidestep Dina over and then have her like push the door in so that it's not she's not directly in front of it. So if the trap is actually like vertical, she's out of the way would you allow that you get what i'm saying no i don't she's on the so door like, it's open a crack and there is a very straining piece of thread twine rope or something that if she pushes a door even more of an inch it's going to snap or it's going to pull on whatever's on the other end attached that's what i'm saying so like if it's since i don't know if it's just an alarm or if it's actually a trap i'm going to direct her to stand out of the way of the door as she's pushing it open the rest of the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that she can do. Use her great big sword just to kind of... Ink. Yeah, her spear. Her spear. Push it open with the spear. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm going to do then. Okay. And that's it. You guys want yeah. to reposition? Okay. I'm, that's, oh, I'm standing... Yeah. I can, well, I'm happy I'm where I am. I'm going to stay at the window to see... What if they grab anything on their way to the door? If it's an alarm or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I'm very sneakily looking in through the window. Okay. And Roxy, on the other side of the door, she's not directly in front of it. So if anyone runs out, they're All flanked. Right. You got it. Pushes on the door. The intense moment of hating my master, making me do things like trap springing. What's wrong with you? Um, she pushes and the twine just becomes tauntor and tauntor as the door opens wider and wider. And unbeknownst to the characters outside the door, but Kata, along the ceiling, just tacked to a wall, is likely in the hallway, and an easy perception from you. Please roll. I'm doing that now. Oh, I Thanks. see nothing. One of the mercenaries nine. sneezes and the other one says, did you hear that? He says, well, I just sneezed. He's like, no, the bell. And they both look at each other and jump up. You did not hear a bell, but you, you obviously see them like, hmm? And then react to it. Initiative, ladies and gentlemen. It is time once again. Four initiative. Don't forget to select your mini when you're rolling. Oh, is that how that? Well, Dina popped up. Well, Dina goes on your command, yeah. So she kind of well, goes she has right her after own you. Initiative. Oh, okay. Well, I she mean, wait that's... for you. Just set her loose. Like round one, you say attack, and then she's just on her own. Basically, I mean, she's smart enough. She has an intelligence score. Oh yeah, so no, no, it's fine. But some, a lot of time, even like animal companions, will just kind of delay until master says, "Do this. What do you want to do?" You know, especially in the first round. Okay, so we've got everybody up there except for Keller. What'd you get, Keller? Uh, thirteen. It should be there, but it's not. Interesting. Well, I've added you a turn. You're good. I'll just type it in. Okay. Right. So. With this pretty much playing out exactly how, with all these 13s, it's going to come down to your dexterity modifiers. 
So bringing Aiden Willems in for combat to play Roxy and handle dice rolls and to aid you, Ashley, because I know it's been a long time since you've played. Can I have Roxy's dexterity modifier? Now she has 16, but it's good to know he's up front. Uh, her dexterity modifier is five. Okay, and at 16, she's going to go first. Our Edelon Dina? Dexterity modifier one. Okay. Kada? Two. And Kyler? Two. Okay. So can I have a roll-off between Kayla and Kyler with natural d20s? Nine. Nine for me. Twelve for me. All right. That puts Kyler at the top. As for us, natural 20. <laughs> that bell goes off, and like, despite the free talking going, what the heck, they, you know, they use their turn to act, they get up. Now, I'll even burn a perception check on both of them to make sure. What? And then they stand. So, starting with the thugs themselves. I'll put a couple in the room here. Starting with the thugs themselves, they merely um, react and get up. And that is them. So, now it's Roxy. What does Roxy do? Before you go, Kata, what was her standing order? She opens the door and Roxy's supposed to go in? Backing up the conversation to before? Roxy was supposed to be there to be prepared in case anything bad happened. So she's basically on guard. Right. Okay. So she's holding as it were. Okay. Kyler, you're up. Kata, you're on deck. What do you do? All right. I'm going to move here. That's 25 movement and look down the hallway. Okay. Now the door's open. All right. Do I see anything or do you want a perception? It's, uh, it's a dark hallway. Okay. It's not very well lit street. So basically you see into the doorway, you know, five feet light bleeds out and that's it. All right, in that case, I'm going to cast light. So move and a spell cast. Yes. And we light up your life with, I'll well, just add you a torch. Or, sorry, a light spell. And this acts like a torch. Yes. And do you have low light vision yourself or just regular vision? I do have low light vision. Okay. Like a half elf. So we put that in there. And voila. You should be able to see. Now, if I've set this up properly, let me just double check here. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Oh, that just lit up the whole thing. Well, that didn't work very well. That's strange. I'll have to sort that out later. All right. Well. It is what it is. I wonder what's lighting everybody up. Oh, it must be something else. Anyway, uh, that's fine. Revealio. <laughs> Using your superior intelligence of eight, you know. You see the hallway. Someone stamped A1 in the floor. And there's a break in the hall at the back. And there's two doorways. One going to the left, west, Kata, that room with the window likely. One going to the right. And that's you, I believe, unless you have any swift actions left, because you moved cast yes, and you're done. Yep. All right. Kada, what do you do? All right. So I'm the only one who knows that they've stood up. And yep. uh, Kyler ran away from me, so there's you know no they've point. Been, you know they've been alerted. Point. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move forward just off a little bit and hastily whisper as quietly as I can with getting his attention that, you know, hey like, obviously when Dina did that, opened the door, something alerted them. They they stood up at the right, like, the exact same moment. So be prepared. I think they're coming. 
And Jinkies, they're on to us. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Eat Gad, they're coming. <laughs> um, and uh, just let Roxy know to hold and be prepared to defend. Because okay. she's at a good spot that if they come out... You know, now, I know talking is for free, but keep in, round a my, uh, a, keep in mind a round is six seconds. And if you burn a move in action to get there, you have three seconds for a message. So it would be like... Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand four. Hey, thousand five. They're on to us. I think thousand six. We better be prepared. You know, like yeah. As opposed to, by the way. Well, it would be like, <laughs> hey, they're coming. Yeah. So be prepared. No, Roxy, guard the door. Yep. No, I just thought I'd bring that up. Um, cool. and that's you. That's me. Because you've moved. Talking is free. You still have an action left, or movement, or a spell, yeah. or a cast, or a pull a weapon. Because if you guys don't yeah, have base attacks of weapon. one, or higher, you have to use move actions to pull them out. Yeah, I have. I'll pull my weapon. Okay, which is what? A staff. Or staff? Sorry. I would assume so. Okay. I apologize. I'm trying to find it on my sheet. Here. No problem. Yep. Quarter uh, staff. Dina. Now I had mentioned for her to pull that action about moving and using the door. She used her weapon, so she stepped aside, part of a move action, drew weapon, and poked at the door. Yep. As it were. So weapon is out. I'll give you that. What does Dina do? Dina is going to, as soon as I find her, speed, which is missing one. Oh, there it is. Bottom of the page. Uh, so. I'm going to go 5, 10, 15. Would she... She'll go here and then kind of like glance around the corner. Okay. A little bit because I'm not sure if she'd be able to see said person there. Okay. Well, you can move straight in, like right to the edge, uh -huh. and notice them on, you know, your combat move and attack if you wish. Okay. Um,. Well, it's a pole arm technically, so it's got reach. So I'm going to swing from, try to poke him from here. Okay. That is allowed. It is allowed, but he gets cover bonus. Yep. Because you're trying to poke through a doorway. Now they they talk about whoever is closer to cover, getting said bonus. But you guys are adjacent, but you're still trying to attack through a door frame. So that means you both get the cover. Lucky you. But is this putting you at a disadvantage unless you want to, you know, unless you're relying on that. So she pokes with a 12, I think. She pokes with a 12? Now, these guys are not the sort of rank and file, shall we say, roofs that they've been dealing with at the dock. These guys are armed, armored, ready to go, and have a decent armor class in their chain shirt, short sword setup. So no, you miss. However, um, flat-footed would have dropped that, but we got to act first. We went, huh, doorbell, got up. So we're up and prepared, as it were. We're ready for action. So I'm sorry, full armor class counts, and you miss. Moving on. Round two. Us. We see you coming into the hallway. He's going to step to intervene. He's going to step to back up. Or to, to you know, get going. As we move, with our plus one base attack bonus, they draw weapons and actually are going to attack you because it is our job. It's what we like to do. You know, I mean, we, we get weekends off, but right now we're on the clock. So I'm afraid with happy delight, because they were kind of bored and one was losing the card game anyway. Happy, happy delight. We, uh, well, to put it bluntly, we're going to stab you with our short swords as soon as I can find oh, these guys are no ropes. They have a decent attack bonus. Dice going out. 18 plus 21. Stabby, stabby. 
The good news is, they're only short swords. So, damage is only d6. Of course, this is still very deadly for a first level character, and they are pretty strong dudes. Eight points. Whew. How are we doing there, Dina? Out of, out of 14, right? Yeah. Right, okay, so we'll take that off. And not uh, feeling a bit under the weather. Well, we are trained mercenaries and all. Ouch. And the other guy can't really do much from here, so he's good. Roxy. You did not instruct Roxy to do anything. You pulled a weapon, so she's still on guard mode. Yep. So I'm going to leave her. She's going to delay until you tell her to do something. So I'm going to drag her down here. Kyler. What do you do? You hear her scream in your mind. Yep. I'm going to have to burn my one... Let's see if I can do it properly. Select my character. And I have one spells. Oh, no. I'm going to use my one rejuvenate Edelon Lesser on her. Which I didn't want to hit that. Is it a ah it is. But before I can do that, I've got to move forward. And there. Okay. That's weird. Okay. So then I'm going to do the healing touch on my Edelon, which is 1d10 plus 1. Okay. Which... You move is an action. Drawing yep. an item is an action. You're done before you can cast it. Drawing a it's weapon. It's not a potion. It's not a drawn weapon. It's a spell. Oh, a spell. I thought you were drawing Spells. a wand. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay, Just so you move spell. up and cast. Yep. Okay. And I don't know why that's doing that. But okay. okay. And she gets how much back? Uh, well, I... So are you tried. saying she's not actually subject to healing? You have to do something special with her I yep. Can you can you explain it to us real quick? It's just because she is a construct, basically, like a a construct of my magic. So I'm basically pouring my magic into rebuild the substance that she is. Okay, I gotcha. Figment of your imagination, blow up doll, whatever you whatever floats your boat. But I got yeah yeah yeah. Okay, so how yeah. much damage do I get back? I'm trying to do that. I don't know why this isn't working. It's 1d10. If this doesn't work, I'll... Uh... Why does it keep doing spell failure? Okay. Let me just do this the old-fashioned way. 1d10. D tw the way you've set it up in d20. So just give me a raw dice roll of the d10. Yep, that's what I'm grabbing. No problem. While he's doing that, Kata, you're on deck. What do you want to do? 10. Ooh, okay. Bringing her back to maximum. And you're done. I believe, yes? Yes, sir. Talking is free. If you're to instruct her, do it now. Now, do you have to make... This is not like a handle animal thing, like where Kate has to make handle animal checks it's to get the cat to do a bunch of... Direct mine connection. Okay, basically. okay. So mine link. Right. Okay. So Kata, you are up. Roxy's on deck. What do you do, Kata? All right. So I'm going to move here. If my mini would move. In front of the door, but back a little bit so that, you know, I'm not right in the center of everything. And what can I see down the hallway? You see as the scene plays. Yeah. Okay. So I can tell that we're definitely like, it's a it's narrow. narrow it's stacked up. Yeah. There's like a There's step no point up. in trying to go in. Um, so I'm going to... Now, you can move through friendlies for free, and someone, especially acrobatic, can actually move 
Like you, you can even move through enemies. You just have to make a s combat maneuver check, acrobatic check against their combat maneuver defense. And if you go straight through their square, it's their defense plus five. So if anyone wants that back corner of the hallway, because we're looking at a doorway that's 10 feet away from our druid, the hallway goes five, 10, there's Kyler, 15, there's Dina. Then there's the open at 20, the guy standing it, but then there's like a little cubby behind him with more wall that you guys could put yourself in if you can make the, you know, assuming rolls. Or you can tell, you know, the cat to get in there. Attack. Yeah. So I'm going to get Roxy. I'm going to instruct Roxy to attack. Okay. Now, what tricks does Roxy have? Have we gotten into that yet? Uh, don't think we have. Uh, I have picked up... I'm, uh, we can change some of them around, but uh, I had chosen attack, defend, uh, flank, sneak, stay, down, and aid. Okay. So. Perfect. So I want actually Roxy to flank now that I know that she can do that. Yep. So I want her to get in behind to flank. Okay. Because like, there's enough space. And these tricks, do they require handle animal rolls? I believe, uh, they, I believe they do. For the initial training, I think they do. After that, I don't know. Um, like, I understand something like Cinder Brave, where you have to, like, dump actions to, like, go through the fire. I don't care what you smell in there, you mangy butt. You know, and the Wookiee does what you want it to do. But um, talking's for free. But I know a lot of druids just abandon the idea that they have to control their animal. It's like, oh, they got all these tons of attacks. And then people go, druid is so powerful. It's like, well, if you read the rules... You know, there's a lot of times they actually have to burn actions to use the animal like a tool. So the druid is doing less to get this fist and claws of fury, you know. Um, now, there's also sort of like a taking a 10, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, it depends on the situation. So for right now, I believe you can just tell it what to do. And it goes in there. You say, flank the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And then she goes. So. And you're done. Anything else? That is it. I am waiting ready. Okay. Roxy. Five, yes. five, ten, fifteen, twenty acrobatics to get through the guy to put yourself in a position. Twenty-five, and then acrobatics cuts it in half. So unfortunately, it's going to take you a double move to get there because the acrobatics will cut your. Yep, yeah, acrobatics of twenty-seven. You do. You move through friendlies for three. So darting along the wall, you know, doing the Prince of Persia wall crawl. She goes in there full bore, gets 10 foot run, goes climbing, shooting past your right shoulder, bouncing off the other thing, Dina, and then getting some height and going straight over. And there's that moment of sailing. And the guys all slowly look up and it lands. She hits the back wall and does the cat pounce and lands on her feet behind the bad guy. But she is done. Dina, full health, you're up. What do you do? Or what does Kyler have Dina do? Or is does Dina... Dina have flanking right now? Or she does. does. That... She gets she gets a plus okay. two. So Dina is going to attack the guy in front of her. Also, um, as of now, because she made a big show of it, and she he she landed there on the end of a turn. The guy goes to flat footed, so his AC drops, and you get a plus two. Okay. Flank flanking is awesome. Why is it rolling doubles? The the crit it always checks for a crit modifier whether you make it or uh, not. Okay, so if, so seventeen. Oh, AC. that does hit. Well, flat footed, AC. Yep. Okay, that so hits. Then, that hits regardless. Damage. Did that roll. There it goes. This thing does 3d8? No. It's... 1d8 plus 4. Why is that? That's what's literally written there. Uh, I guess I'm doing this the old-fashioned way. I, I think you're going to have to stop mucking with roll 20 until next show so we can sort some things out. Yeah. Just so we're I'm not so burning so much airtime. So by all uh, means, pop up a... Take the damage on the left. The left one is correct. It's 1d8 plus 4. Yeah. Ignore what's on the right. So he basically, he's, he sees the seven as your first roll, and he really likes it, as opposed to your four. 
without announcing what you just rolled, which is crappy, I will give you that. Okay. Because it does, if you hover your mouse over the actual damage in the track bar on the right, left, uh -huh. you'll see a bunch of numbers in brackets, and it will say the 7, the 3, the 5, and the 3 that you rolled, all in brackets, and then it'll say the, pl the plus 4. So Aiden's caught on to this for not fudging rolls, but going, hey, these were legit rolls even though we canceled them. And since you can see technically which is the first or the last, we can still call them as legit. So taking your seven, adding four, doing 11 points of damage, she hits this guy and hurts him really, really badly. But I'm still standing. I don't like you anymore, but I'm still standing. We are entering round three and we will see you next time. You know, it's funny because they always say don't split the party, but we really never got the party together. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Uh, good, 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 goodbye. Yes. Meow. <laughs>